Hello and welcome to Fully Charged Plus. Now, today's episode is a perfect example of when two leading companies get together for the benefit of electric vehicle drivers like you and me. So I want to welcome to the studio Chris Darby from EV Energy and Mike Schooling from Indra. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, great to be here. Thank you, Robert. Now, now before we dive in and get too technical, can you just tell me what it was that, that brought the two companies together? So um, we've, been, we've been working in the uh, electric vehicle space for, for a number of years. Um, we've been seeing a few opportunities to, to improve uh, our own product and started working with EV Energy to, to do that. Yeah, and we've respected Indra for a very long time, a fantastic history of building great products. And really our role in the market is to make EV charging simple, green and cheap for everyone, no matter what charger or car they have. So we're really excited to be partnering with one of the best. Right. So now what, what you're talking about here is, a, I mean, it, it looks like a really good product. But it's the idea is it's, it's very simple to use a very smart charger. Is that, would that be just about encompassing what you're doing? Exactly right. So EV, what EV Energy does to partner with, with Indra here is we understand the energy tariff that you're on and we solve that problem first. So we make sure we're using the, the lowest cost energy. So if you're an Octopus Agile user like yourself, then yeah. we'll maybe even make sure you get paid to charge your car, which is great news. Right. Um, but then also um, we look at the other generation on the grid. So think about the carbon impact of your charging. No one buys an electric car because they want to burn coal. They do it because they want to use sunshine and, and wind to power their car. So we make sure if there's excess sun, um, solar generation or excess wind generation, um, on the grid more broadly, it goes into your vehicle. Right. And then finally, as more and more people buy EVs, it's gonna put constraints on the, on the streets that we live on. And no one wants the street dug up to install a bigger a wire, right? And so by using smart hardware and smart software, we're able to bid in the flexibility of your car and make sure we keep the cost and carbon low, but we charge every car on the street overnight to make sure that they don't have to come dig up your road to install a new wire. So that is the thing is if like 20 people all plugged in at once and all went for full power, the local grid might be a little bit strained. And so can you, that is really good. So that the individual chargers can basically communicate. So you can say car A, we can charge, car B will wait a bit because that's not such a rush, car C, we can do a lower power. Can you, can you vary the amount of power going into the cars as well as the time they, they charge? Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so we can take a whole street and say, well, some people need to get up at six, some at seven, some at eight, some at 9 a.m. Uh, and some people don't need to charge tonight. So yeah. we can then smooth out the charging. So the whole street looks like it's using a kind of even amount of power throughout the night. The grid's very uh, relaxed and not too stressed out by the whole situation. And you've still got your car fully charged the next morning when you uh -huh. need it. And then, so Indra are actually making, are you making the hardware, Mike? Yeah, that... so everything's designed and manufactured in, in Malvern and, and all of the, the components sourced from, from the UK and Europe. So um, we've been manufacturing now for, for three or four years now on uh, electric vehicle smart charging. We've, uh, we've now got, with, with this particular hardware version, since October, we haven't had a warranty return and shipped about 1,500 units. And they, I mean, presumably you've now got enough feedback to know they're pretty solid and reliable and that people can use them and they're not. Yeah, a absolutely. We're on the fourth iteration of the hardware now. Um, so I think you came to our launch event back in 2017. Um, and we're, um, yeah, we've improved it a couple of times that, you know, installer regulations change and, and some of the cybersecurity regulations change. And we, we have to adapt the hardware and evolve with that. Um, so the fourth iteration now, since we launched that back in October, um, we were zero returns, absolutely zero. That is fantastic. So what, I mean, what, what, are, what do you see as the next steps then? What, where could this lead to in, in the next generation of things? Lots of technology coming over the road. Um, we're, we're well known for the, the vehicle to grid technology. Um, I believe you've got one of our, our chargers, Robert, in your garage. Um, so um, that, that's where things are going next and the technology and the partnership here with EV Energy will certainly flow into that as well. Uh, where things are going. Uh, CCS will be a big thing for, for AC charging in the home as well. Um, so the, the CCS standard covers AC charging um, as well. Right. Um, and that gives us extra communication with the car and we get more data out of the car that way. So that's a, a big movement forward. Um, we've also then got um, CCS coming for vehicle to grid as well. So more cars supported. Um, so th things are going to move forward very quickly in that space. Right. Because I mean, that's one of the things I've been wondering, pondering is, is, do you see a, a time when there will be vehicle to grid or vehicle to home that just uses type two, that uses a seven kilowatt connection, or is that unlikely because of the communications that you need? I think we'll see pilots that, that manage that. There's certainly some challenges to, to AC vehicle to grid over the type two connector. Um, car manufacturers want cost out of cars, they want weight out of cars. So it makes much more sense to put that onto the, the wall of the you house. You put that on the wall, yeah, yeah. But that is, I mean, that could be really game changing once the, the energy can be going both ways as a, as a just normal, you know, because I have a vehicle to grid charger at my house, but that's still fairly exceptional. 
but to, to have that as a, a normal thing, you know, it, 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 I think it takes electric cars to the next level. Because most of the time, this is, I think, the myth with electric cars is, oh, I won't, I've got to charge it. No, you'll do something else while it's charging. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, it's always been my goal. I never want to wait while my car's charging. I want to be doing something else that's more interesting. I'm not going to stand around waiting for it. So that is, and you're really facilitating that with this, this stuff that is, you literally plug it in and walk away. You don't worry about it. So how yeah. long does it take to charge my car? About four seconds. Exactly. Plug it in and walk away. You know, I think that's the critical thing. Isn't it? People charge their car where they park the longest. And for most people, that's going to be where they park overnight, yeah. when they're sleeping. And, and then you get into workplaces, you get into supermarkets and everything else. But it's only very rare people will go out their way to charge you know, a long journey on a motorway. Or, or yeah, like. yeah. So, Mike, Mike, can you tell me about the this, this Smart Pioneer? What is, what is that? Going yeah, to be? of course. So, so the, the Smart Pioneer, the device you see here, um, it's based on the Smart Pro, which is a product we've had in uh, manufacture now for, for over two years. Um, we've sold several thousand uh, and it's been really reliable. Um, so it's doing uh, solar matching, it's doing tariff integrations and everything else there. What we're doing with, with the Pioneer, uh, it's new products, it's doing the V1G use case we just spoke about and um, also giving you customer rewards so you get some, something back for, for trading with the grid on top of that, as well as a, a slightly extended warranty. Oh, I see. So if, say you've got a, a, a sensible house, no solar panels, and you're not on a special cool tariff, you can still take advantage of charging your car, even if you might be paying the same amount, you can, you, you, you can get something back from charging your car. Yes, yeah, so you come home, plug your car in as normal, wake up the next day with a fully charged car, and also some rewards that you can, some points you can spend on uh, charging on the go, on a coffee whilst you're waiting for your car to charge, right. or carbon offset credits, things like that. So that, oh, that's, I mean, that's quite a good thing, because that's one of the problems is, I keep seeing, I'm thinking, well, I'm benefiting from this, but I'm lucky because I've got, you know, I can afford to do this and I've got batteries in my house that allow me to use right. a very extreme tariff. For people who are on a normal tariff, there's, there's less obvious benefits, but if they're getting benefits from that, that's a real plus. Yeah, so what the, 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 the Pioneer does for us is it um, enables us to take those households where, frankly, we're not all going to be bidding into the balancing mechanism or calling up our local distribution system operator and saying, hey, I've got some flexibility. So we aggregate that all up um, in partnership with Indra. And then we bid the flexibility of exactly when we charge your vehicle in, right. optimizing for carbon, optimizing for those constraints around um, the, the, the road you might live on or the substation that serves you. And then we give that back to you in the form of, of reward credits that you can then turn into free coffee. So, Chris, can you tell me about the, uh, how, the, how you use EV Energy? I mean, is, you've got an app, presumably, that you set up to use it. Yeah, so when you get your, your charger installed at, uh, at your home, your installer will connect it up to the EV Energy platform. You download an app, you get sent a link in an email, just click the link, download the app, sign up, let us know where you live, uh, let us know about your car so we know how much energy you need. And then you basically plug your car in and that's it. And you can right. check it every now and again. It will manage all the smart charging for you. So that means it will do all the optimizations in your home, but also with the grid. Um, it will, if you need to override it, you can press the boost button. All right, and that, and that just, would just start charging. Yeah, it starts right. charging right away. So if you've, uh, your, your plans have changed and you need to get your car charged quickly, you can just plug it in. You might pay slightly more money if you're on a time of day rate. Um, you probably won't be using the lowest carbon energy, but you'll still get your vehicle charged. Right. Um, and, and you don't need to go out to the car and press anything on the charger. You do that on the app. No, absolutely. So you just you can do it. For, you can sit in front of your telly and go, uh, yeah, I've got to pick the kids up later, right? Boost the car. Right. Um, you don't need to go outside to, to do any of that. Um, and then at the end of the month, if you drive for work, you can pull all your data off there and submit it, submit your mileage for expenses. So it tracks all your charging um, on at home and also on the go if you've if you've connected your car up as well. Um, and it tracks the carbon you've used and how many kilowatt hours you've used. So you get a really good sense of right. how much energy you're using. Um, and soon we'll be doing some roaming stuff as well. So you'll be able to use EV Energy to access public charging networks too. Right, because that's and, really and, useful, yeah. Yeah, so it solves that problem of how do I charge when I'm at home, but also if I'm going on a long journey, what, what can I do about charging there? Right. And best of all, you get rewarded for it all. Yeah. So you get these reward points you can spend on, on the roaming networks and on carbon offsetting and all sorts of stuff. Oh, so one of the things you, uh, that's now clicked, I'm always a bit slow on this, but you, if you're charging well at home and you're, you're, you're picking up lots of rewards, you could use those rewards to pay for charging when you're out on the road. That's yeah, one of exactly. the ways you could yeah. do it. Right. Which is 
that makes a lot of sense. So when you're signed up with that, then if you're if you are on an agile tariff, you know you're already benefiting from it. Do you still get rewards from that, or is that really only if you're on a, a standard tariff? No, so you get you get rewards whatever you've got. So even if you've got a flat rate tariff and um, you don't want to switch your supplier, that's absolutely fine. I know that can be a stressful experience. So you just tell us what tariff you're on and tell us where you are in the country, and we will automatically bid your charging into the flexibility mechanisms that are there, and we'll give you reward points for smart charging. Um, Firstly, because we are able to make a little bit of money on it, but also because it's the right thing to do. It's yeah. reducing the carbon impact of driving electric, so you should be rewarded for it. And that's actually a, a key point that I've only learnt since I've had electric cars, is that you can be in one part of the country when the carbon uh, output for, of electricity is quite high at that moment. You could be literally 20 miles up the road and it's way lower. So, that, so you take that into account as well. Where, where you are geographically is it equally important. Yeah, exactly. And, and when we're talking about flexibility, it can matter down to which street you're on. And so right. if we've got lots of EVs on one street or we've got a substation being repaired or something, we're able to help the grid and say, well, look, we've got these EVs. Do you want us to pause them charging for a few hours? Your car will still be charged in the morning. Right. It just might not happen exactly when you're expecting. So that's what we manage in the background. Um, but then we reward you for doing that so you can get the benefit of it um, for, for, for kind of being willing to be flexible. So, I mean, what you've achieved so far is really impressive. What, I mean, where do you see things going next? What, what are the next big steps you're going to make? So, so closer home integration with the charging hardware has got to be where it goes next. So uh, to go green, we've got to electrify everything. We've got to stop burning stuff, as you keep saying, Robert. Um, so if we look at uh, what the home's going to look like in, say, five or 10 years' time, you're going to have heat pumps, solar, battery storage. Um, but all of these things need to be managed together and talk to each other. So a very close integration with, with our hardware and, and the software services that, that run it um, and, and these other systems are going to be key. Right. I, I mean, I think we've seen in the past uh, three to four years or you, you were saying you started fully charged 11 years ago, right? The number of EVs on the road has, yeah. has gone through the roof. It's only going to keep growing. Um, and that's going to put more and more strain on the grid. Um, and we already see in parts of America, in California, and indeed even in the Midwest, we're getting these grid outages. And hardware like this is going to enable you to invest in an electric vehicle, get it charged up and plug it in. And, and when the power goes out, you'll be able to run your fridge and your Wi-Fi and keep living at home, right? Um, instead of investing in an LPG generator or something like that. So I think for me, it's going to be more and more electric vehicles uh, and seeing them behave in different ways. But fundamentally, they can't sacrifice that simplicity of jumping in the car and driving away as well. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Really, really interesting. So exciting to see how these things are developing. And I mean, it's just, I think, part of the whole energy transition and transport transition that there's, there's areas opening up that probably 10 years ago we wouldn't even have thought of you know we, we wouldn't have dreamt of what's been going on it's really exciting you're definitely at the forefront of it really really good thanks very much and that's all we've got time for so do join us again on fully charged plus whenever you're in the mood <laughs>